Greetings, humans. You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone Podcast. I am your host, DJ, and today... I'm the other host, Garav Galati from the Command Zone. Oh my gosh, we're talking about 40K. Ooh. These commander decks are so good. This is the mm -hmm. budget upgrade guide. Today we're talking about Necron Dynasties. Mm -hmm. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over the deck sets. We're gonna go over how the deck plays. We're gonna tell you how to make the most of it, taking 10 cards and putting them into this deck, taking 10 cards out, all for a reasonable budget. But before we get started, we have to hear from our sponsors. That's right. And our first sponsor is cardkingdom.com slash command. That's right. We're back to being sponsored by the most trusted card retailer in the business, Card Kingdom. Now, if you want to pick up some of these cards, we're about to talk about these awesome Necron cards to build your own unkillable robot dynasty or any of the other uh, 40K, Infinity, Brothers War, all the cool stuff that's coming out this year and uh, next year. If you want to do that and support the show at the same time, head on over to cardkingdom.com slash command. Whenever I order cards from them, I'm constantly amazed at how fast I get the your order has shipped email confirmation. Trust me, they are crazy fast. And their customer service is simply top notch, easily the best in the biz in my opinion. Look, you're a magic player, which means you're going to buy magic cards. Just use cardkingdom.com slash command when you do. And not only will you be getting super fast and reliable service, but you'll simultaneously be supporting all of the content we create here at the Command Zone in the process. I mean, why wouldn't you do that? It's a win-win. And our next sponsor, our other sponsor, is the fabulous Ultra Pro. They make so many awesome magic uh, products to keep your decks looking super shiny. And the Command Zone uses them here on just about every episode of Game Nights. You'll see Ultra Pro stuff on there. And from their playmats, their superb fine art sleeves, which I am a big fan of, um, everything is top-notch quality, and they also have the official license for the card art for each new set that comes out. So if you want that, ultrapro.com slash command. I'm actually a really big fan of their uh, pro uh, binders, their Mythic Edition pro binders, which are 12 pocket pages, three rows of four, which means you can show off your awesome blinged out play sets of cards. Jimmy's also a fan of those. Oh, he like, yeah, he showed me them. He's like, he's like, I got 10 of them. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. They, they're very high quality binders. Yeah. And they have side loading pages, which I prefer. I mean, I don't know if anybody actually makes pages that are still top loading. Top loading? Ew, <laughs> yucky. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you don't so want that. You want those side loaders. And that prevents your beautiful cardboard babies from falling out when you're transporting them. So and I call cards cardboard babies. I don't know what you call them, but that's what I call them, cardboard babies. It's good, yeah. I oftentimes like to flip my binders like the professor. And so oh. having side loaders are important for that. That makes sense too. For juggling yeah. binders, yeah. yeah. So check out shop.ultrapro.com slash command for that. And last but not least, let's talk about Patreon. Patreon, oh my gosh, they're filled with fantastic people. We talk to them on Discord. We play with them on Spell Table. Mm -hmm. They see our content early. Our patrons are fantastic. And one of the many perks of being a patron is we call out the name and dedicate an episode to one lucky patron every single week. And this episode is dedicated to... Nick, Nick Grayson. Grayson. You rock. Nick, you rock. And Thank you might you. be a superhero because that's very close to Dick Grayson. Oh. Just saying. So why did you out him? I did not just say now he has to fight crime in a different city. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my god. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, let's get to the main topic. Let's do it. The main topic is the pre-constructed deck, Necron Dynasties. This is the upgrade guide. We're gonna take that pre-constructed deck, that sweet little deck that you can get, you know, from your local game store, from mm -hmm. Channel Fireball, and you know what? You might just wanna play it straight out of the box at your local game store, but sometimes you wanna give it a little bit of an extra spice. You wanna upgrade it just that little bit to make sure that it can hang with the rest of your play group. Yeah. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna explain the deck. We're gonna explain how we broke it down, how it plays, what the legendary creatures are, but most importantly, we're gonna find 10 cards, easy ways to upgrade this deck. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do it for under $30. Whoa, it's actually quite a bit lower than that, so you might be able to foil out some of these cards. Oh, nice stuff. I recommend it. 
All right, so in order to get started, we have to understand the deck a little bit. And so we're gonna take a look at the legendary creatures because we might wanna have the mm -hmm. face commander be the legendary that we build around, yes. or we might want some of the others. And this deck has five legendary creatures five in it. Yeah, single Crazy. color mono black. And I would say to understand the deck, you actually have to go back one more step. And let's talk about who Necrons are. Oh. Because we did a little different take on this. Uh, I did 10 cards in, but five of them are flavor also appropriate cards. I mean, they're good cards in themselves. You'll see them, but they're also very flavorful into the what the Necrons want to do. And the Necrons... Wait, what I do mean, the Necrons want to do? Well, let's talk about okay, it. Okay, let's I do mean, it. I you, you've done 40K stuff before, okay, right? Okay, so, so I... I have done some 40K, yeah. but I have had someone very smart and capable next oh. to me telling me what to do. And so like, <laughs> I've been I've been like guided through it yeah. a little bit. And so the lore and the flavor, like I don't know what it is. Yeah. So that's why we're gonna be leaning on some 40K experts here. Yeah, I mean, I would not say I'm an expert. It, it, so 40K has had decades of lore. Okay, like, literally decades of lore. So I have just have just been a fan since I was a kid. And I've only literally played one game, but I've painted and built a bunch of models. I love the models <laughs> for 40K. You've played one game. No, but you've like painted dozens of models. Trust me, it's all about the painting and building. Like this is very common in that community, in my community, I would say. And so the Necrons, uh, I'll, I'll give you a short uh, burst about their lore, but basically they are an ancient race of uh, essentially Xenos, which is what's known as the alien races in uh, 40K. And they are basically, at one point, they were stripped of all their flesh because they were uh, irradiated with all this stuff. And they uh, are now just walking automatons that uh, want to take back their dynasties. Uh, they were large and in charge before, but now it, they put themselves to sleep so they can wake up and cause havoc here, well, not here, but 40,000 years in the future from here, I guess. Grav, this might be an insensitive question. Okay. Um, I'm seeing a bunch of reanimated skeletons. Yes. Are, are, are they evil? Oh, yeah. Is this yeah. the evil? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. I was yeah. worried about super, like, yes, okay. I mean, they don't, super evil. They don't have like the capacity for like caring for living Literally things Literally no anymore. heart. They just don't have it anymore. They, okay. don't, they don't care about living things anymore. They so are, what's their motivation? So their motivation, uh, well, they kind of achieve their motivation, which is uh, originally they wanted immortal life. Okay. They've gotten it. They will live forever. Um, and basically now their motivation is to uh, awaken their, uh, essentially these giant tombs that they've been sleeping in for millennia and awaken the rest of their dynasty so they can continue ruling the galaxy and destroy the Eldari, the space Marines, all the other loser races, let's be honest. <laughs> so so they're basically going to go out there with their skeleton mm -hmm. skeleton little army and they're going to just keep on bringing back and reanimating yes. more and more skeletons yes. to build up this massive army that's going to strip the rest of the universe. Reanimation is the name of the game in uh, the Necron lore and in this deck because basically even if you destroy a Necron like to, to the core, they will phase out and go to another place and become repaired by other Necrons and then come back. Like there is no stopping the Necrons. They will oh. continually replenish themselves. That's pretty cool. Okay. So that's what we've got to kind of do with this deck. At least that's the way I took it. Okay. So, so let, that's some of the lore. I'm glad that I got some background information on this because now I'm going to see these legendary creatures. I'm yeah. going to be like, ah, that makes sense. That yes. matches up really nicely. Yes. Um, so what's the face commander of this pre-constructed deck? So the face commander is Sazerac, the Silent King. Wait, that's not how you say it. Sazarek, the Silent King. I'm sorry if I pronounce that, but Cezatic, you should pronounce it quieter. It's the yes, silent Cezatic, the Silent King. <laughs> There's some ASMR for you. Um, yes, that is the face commander and uh, legendary artifact creature Necron, which is obviously a new creature yeah. type that's only in this deck. Uh, it is a three-four flying. Uh, it has an ability called My Will Be Done. Whenever Cezatic the Silent King attacks, mill three cards. You may put an artifact creature card or vehicle card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. So already you can see that it's doing some graveyard shenanigans. Putting things in the graveyard is obviously good if we're messing around with the graveyard in any way. Yes. Uh, does milling have anything to do flavor-wise or? Um, I mean, if they're going through like the corpses of their old Necrons to find like good Necrons, maybe. That but like, good, okay. But like most of the time they're reanimating stuff. Uh, Got it. But is other it, Necrons. Is it reanimating straight back to the battlefield or is it okay if it like reanimates back to our hand? I mean, to your hand is that, that's what I would say is like if they are uh, destroyed beyond repair, that's going to your hand. And then when you play it again, that's you spending the resources to repair them and put them back out. Got it. OK, so from a magic card perspective, mm -hmm. four mana, you know, flyer, fine stats, it needs to attack 
and then you need to get a little bit lucky when it comes to your mill, and then you can draw a card. Yes, yeah, it does require you to have a milled, an artifact creature card specifically. So not mm -hmm. just an artifact, it does require it to be also a so creature. So not even your soul rings or your other utility things yeah. or your ramp spells. Okay, so an artifact creature. Uh, does this deck have a lot of those? We're going to get into deck stacks later, but does this deck have a lot of them? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, good, good, you good. will, like, I would say one in three, you would probably get one at least. Cool. Yeah. Um, but again, this isn't even really a draw attack draw card. I mean, it's not even that. No, so, yeah, not quite. So, okay, but I can see it. I mean, flavor-wise, he's very exciting because he is the cover art, like the cover art, the Silent King, like everybody knows the Silent King. But at the same time, I kind of do wish he had a cooler effect. Mm. I kind of wish okay. he did have a cooler effect, but he's he's awesome. He's awesome. Okay, good. Uh, so the, we mentioned there are five legendary creatures. Yes. So let's cover the other four. Okay. Um, we're going to go in mana cost order. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is Illuminator Cesaras. Uh, this is two and a black for a legendary artifact creature, Necron. Uh, Secrets of the Soul is the ability they have, which is tap and sacrifice another creature, add an amount of black mana equal to the sacrifice creature's mana value. And it is a 3-3 three, three creature. I mean, I don't know if this is a Necron ability, but it sounds like a very like evil ability to be like, aha, you weaker creature, I'm going to sacrifice you and get some mana. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, reusing their own recycle, reuse, you know. The, Reduce the and close the loop. That thing made it past the centuries, like 40,000 years in the future. They're still using that. Oh, so nice. Okay, good. That's what the Necrons are trying to do here. They're very green. They're very, as you can tell, <laughs> yes. they're very green. Yes. <laughs> okay. So this thing can obviously just like use up some of the stuff, get a creature into the graveyard, yeah. um, ramp you. I mean, I can see how if you were to curve out, you would lose value when your three drop can't attack anymore. Or exactly. It just doesn't do anything. And so you cash it in for mana and play something bigger. Okay. Yes. I can see the utility in this, but it feels like utility, not like a big splashy effect. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. All right. The next one is Imotek, the Storm Lord. Two and two black for a legendary artifact creature, Necron, surprise. Uh, and it has, it has actually two abilities. Uh, the first one is Phaeron. Whenever one or more artifact cards leave your graveyard, create two, two, two black Necron artifact creature tokens. So that's the first ability. The second ability is Grand Strategist. At the beginning of combat on your turn, another target artifact creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains menace until end of turn. And it is a three, three creature. So, uh, okay. there's a lot going on here. And I think this, uh, as you'll see in a minute, this is the one I chose for the deck uh, in my version of it to be the commander because it has a lot going on on it. This is a pretty powerful effect. Like two two twos yeah. is a lot of power and toughness to be put on the graveyard yeah. uh, or put on the battlefield. How, I mean, it seems like there's a bit of a hoop to jump through. What's the, what are the conditions of getting those two two twos again? So uh, basically you want an artifact card to leave your graveyard to spawn two two twos. So there's many ways to do this. And I counted up in the base deck how many cards actually activate this ability. Oh, cool. Okay. And it's about one in five. It's a little less than one in five. So okay. it's about 19 or so. And there's a, there's a, so basically when this happens, it's a great bonus. It's awesome. And I'm putting in some cards later on that you'll see that actually make this happen more often than you want it to. But it's not something that we can reliably count on happening every turn or multiple times no. a turn or something like that. No, okay. not, not too much, but it not is in good. the pre-con, but you might be able to make something that could. But do there's that. many like the Silent King, as, as we already saw, when he mills cards, he returns them back to your hand. That's a way for a card to leave. the Oh, graveyard. you're right. Okay. So like that's an that's already one trigger. So wait, let's about. just like brainstorm in our head. What are ways that we can get cards to leave our graveyard. Okay, so that's one when you- So like, bring mailing, it back to your hand. Yep, exactly. Reanimation. Okay, good. Reanimate yeah. an artifact creature or another artifact, it leaves your graveyard. Uh, exiling from your graveyard, yeah. whether it be a bazooka bog, you're not gonna bog yourself, but if someone does, you get a benefit out of it. Okay. Um, and uh, I think there was one more. Is there one more? There's things like unearth. Which is reanimation, kind oh, yes, of. Yes, Because I saw that that's on a the few other creatures. One. Unearth, uh, this deck contains a lot of unearth creatures. Like, that's its secondary sort of thing. So whenever you unearth a creature, you also get two two twos. It's pretty big. That's pretty good. And the power and toughness bonus is just a kind of a free bonus, right? Like, it's just going to happen. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, say you, this is a really good card to have when you're unearthing because it gives a creature at the start of combat plus two, plus two in Menace. So that Unearth creature is going to attack anyways because it has to or you're going to lose it. Mm -hmm. It's going to attack with plus two, plus two in Menace every time you unearth something. Okay. Pretty good. So you told us about the ways that we can trigger this. It feels like the the two, two, twos is the big trigger. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully we can supplement that a little bit because I 
you mentioned 19 cards, like 20% of your deck, or yeah. I guess 19% of your deck. Yeah. I want to, <laughs> I want to, <laughs> math, I, I want to do it a little bit more than that. So yes. I'm glad that you're going to uh, do 10 in and 10 out so that we can do that a little bit more. Yes. But hang on, we're going to cover uh, the other ones because maybe you're wrong. Maybe this is not the commander. <gasps> I know. Yeah, I know. Maybe yeah, some of these other legendary five creatures. There are like, five choices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you want to do the last two? No, you can go ahead and do okay, it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Here I go. Here I go. All right. The fourth one is Anakir, the Traveler. This is four and a black for legendary artifact creature, Necron. Uh, its ability is Lord of the Furian Legions. Now, this ability says, whenever Anakir, the Traveler, attacks, you may cast an artifact spell from your hand or graveyard by paying life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. And this is a 4-4. Four, four. Here's another way to get a card out of your graveyard. Ooh, you cast it out of your graveyard. I, here's the thing. I like cheating mana. Yeah. Life is a resource. I oh, really yeah. like cheating mana. Yeah. This okay. is powerful. This is very powerful. It's very good. Uh, it does need to um, attack. It doesn't really have any yeah. evasion. So, you know, it's got to attack somebody that's yeah, open. But okay, just attack right. one person. It's just one tiny hoop to jump through. So you know? this seems pretty good. How come you didn't choose this guy? So I didn't choose this guy because I uh, I liked the other card better. Imatech the Stormlord is much cooler and uh, has abilities that uh, synchronize better with what I like playing. Uh -huh. uh, I think this one is probably slightly more powerful. And I think this is the commander that Jimmy actually played on the Game Nights episode for this. And you'll see, obviously, it's very powerful. But uh, it is one mana more. It does cost five instead of uh, the four for Imatech the Stormlord. But um, yeah, it just didn't sing to me. That's all I can say about Do this Do you think it's to very... build around this, you might need uh, a few more upgrades than just 10? Like maybe you go for the bigger effects or something like that? Yeah, you might need, uh, like I said, it doesn't have any evasion. So you want to do, you do want to give it some evasion. Now, if you had Imitech at the same time as uh, Anarchy, you would obviously give it plus two, plus two in Menace. Synergy. And now that's a lot of synergy, which is why I didn't like take out any of the commanders of this deck because they're all very good working together. They're very good working together. All right. I like, I like that one a lot. It's I think good. that it's really good. I like the top end of being able to just play things for free. That's I'm a fan like of that. that. Yeah. yeah. All right, but the last one to round out the new commanders. The last one is Trazen the Infinite. This is four and two black for a four six legendary artifact creature Necron. It has death touch and it has one ability. And this, oh wait, yes, one ability. Prismatic Gallery. As long as Trazen the Infinite is on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all artifact cards in your graveyard. So it's almost kind of like a necrotic ooze for artifacts. Ooh. When necrotic ooze is a combo piece. Like that's gotta be. Yeah, yeah. You, well, you think so. There's not many cards already in the deck that really do what this wanna, wants to do. There's a, there's a ton of mana rocks. So obviously you could tap it for mana, but it is a six drop. <laughs> so six, six so, drop, uh, tapping for two with your soul ring. It's not yeah. gonna feel great, okay. but um, there's some other stuff you can do. Um, it, it's it's all right for a six drop you kind of want a little more to do but it, it requires a lot more setup than the other ones i feel like so basically if you wanted to build around this fine but you need to do some searches to get some really good and juicy yeah. artifacts add them to the deck and then make try to get those in your graveyard as quickly as possible yeah i think uh, i think this card has the biggest potential to be like the combo build version mm -hmm. of this deck if you had a way to like do a bunch of things where you tap artifacts untap them and it's all by doing this with your commander uh, in, in, on on the board like like, I mean, Necrotic Ooze isn't legendary, so you can't play as a commander, but mm. if you ever wanted a Necrotic Ooze in the command zone, like, this is pretty close. It had to be artifact build, but it's pretty close. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I can see that. There's tons of, there are artifacts, like Staff of Domination, stuff mm -hmm. like that, that can untap itself. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I can see that. But definitely requires a, a definitely a lot of tuning and just the right cards, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, this is no surprise. You decided to choose... Imotech the Stormlord? Imotech the Stormlord. Okay. Yes. Good stuff. So you, we already described the deck a little bit. Um, and you described kind of the strategy of it, but we're going to go into some of the... <laughs> stats. 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 Nice. Nice. Okay. So first off, uh, ramp. 14. 14. That's, that's a lot of ramp. That is a lot of ramp. That's a lot of ramp. Uh, maybe because this is an artifact-based deck. I mean, yeah. And it's like monocolored. They're like, all right, we can go all in on this ramp. We can move into sort of bigger drops. Yeah. You know, is there, is this have a sort of a higher curve? Like, are you seeing a lot of like sixes and sevens and it eights does, in it? It does have a, a few sevens and I think at least one eight. And yeah, if you can get there and get there early by ramping, yes, they are very good cards to have in the deck. Um, but 14 is a lot of, ramp. yeah, it's, 
I think lot. that I think that some of the car ways that they're getting around it though is that some of these mana rocks have sacrifice abilities yes. on it. Yeah. Like Mindstone is in the deck, Commander Sphere is in the deck. Mm -hmm. Hedron Archive. And so, yeah. Oh yeah, Hedron Archive. And so it'll those will naturally ramp when you need to, and then get into your graveyard to trigger a lot of these cool artifact graveyard synergies. And yeah. so I think that um part of the ramp is also earmarked to be able to get into your graveyard too. Yes, exactly. Um next up we've got card draw. Uh, seven. No, it's not, it's not bad, but it's not great. I think I'd like a little bit more card draw, but um, yeah, you have to consider this deck does a lot of do do, does do a lot of graveyard shenanigans. Mm. So like we've already seen, there's a couple cards here that pull from your graveyard to your hand or cast directly to the battlefield. So you have to kind of put that into consideration. So with that in play, I think seven's not bad, but it can definitely do a little better. Okay. Uh, single target removal. Just five. Okay, that's fine. I think it's fine. It's not bad. It's fine. It's not bad. What about board wipes? Four. Four board wipes. Four board wipes is good. It's not bad. I mean, it's, it's on that. It's on the higher end of that what feels I think. high because it feels like this is a creature based strategy. Like we're talking about, yeah. you know, the commander that we're focusing on. Like we're going to, you know, move things in and out of our graveyard yes. and then generate multiple two twos. Like yes. we're kind of going wide, and we want creatures on the battlefield to give plus two plus two in menace. Right. Um, uh, if the Necrons need to destroy a planet to like do mm. what they got to do, like, hey, they can rebuild easily, right? They're indestructible. You're right. With They're, all these graveyard shenanigans. Yeah, like who, exactly. Like who can, if someone gets too far ahead, board wipe, we rebuild faster than you do. Yes, that's, that's I think, the idea behind this uh, four board wipes in here. Okay, so let's talk about things that are more specific to this deck. How many artifacts are in this deck? 49. <laughs> wow. It's the most metal deck of all time. Like it's that's I mean, it's awesome. I think people would have been very disappointed if this deck wasn't all artifacts like that is Necron to a to a T. Like, Necrons are they're, they're skeletons, but they're also like artifacts. They're very they're, like there's no there's no there's not a shred of humanity or flesh or tissue left in them. Like it. it's all metal. They're all automatons walking death like they're they're amazing but very cool so yeah. mono black artifacts definitely very flavorful yes thing. so yeah all the creatures are artifacts uh, it's it's awesome yeah okay so how many if we have that many artifacts how many cards synergize with artifacts in some way so artifact support we have about 19 cards in here which is a decent amount i mean it's pretty good uh, yeah 19 percent, like we talked about before <laughs> yeah ex 19 <laughs> if we're doing percentages if that's what people are into uh, no, no, but 19 cards that's that seems yeah. that seems good it feels like it feels like you're going to get a payoff a lot of the time when you're when yes. you're playing this deck okay. exactly Yes. Cool. Um, and then you also mentioned graveyard. There's lots of things where you put them into the graveyard or get them out of the graveyard, get two twos. Yes. What about that graveyard synergy, that churn? So there's about 27 cards in this deck that are graveyard Ooh. specific. That's pretty good. It's about more, it's a little more than one fourth. That's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. And we're talking about, we're talking percentages, fractions, raw numbers, all sorts of stuff like that. Stats. Uh, we haven't done a, we haven't done a throw together yet. We're doing it together. How do I do this? Right. Oh, you just got to get the page off the table in some way, shape, or form. Oh. But I'm going to do a paper airplane because I, I haven't crumple? done it in a little while. Crumple? Of course you can. And then it's all about the style of okay. getting it off. Okay. I've been I've been known to do this very poorly and have it float back towards me, which is why I'm doing the paper airplane because I oh. don't think that this can fly back on the table again. I see. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm I'm just going to do a nice good old flick. Ooh, flick is good. I'm going to do. <gasps> oh, you almost got the lens. <laughs> Jake, he didn't go. He was I didn't, I didn't, super Jake. far I've, away. Jake. Jake, I never have. I have. Okay. <sighs> okay. All, All right. right. <laughs> Let's talk about value. All right. Deck value. So here's the thing. This deck is cool. It's flavorful. Mm -hmm. It's exciting to play. Yes. But is it worth it financially? Like you got to know if you're getting good value when you're spending your hard earned dollar bills on it. Yeah. And that's hard to say, I will say, mm. for this deck and the Warhammer ones, because a lot of the cards are brand new and unique. Yeah, so this so, is actually incredibly difficult. I'm gonna be throwing a lot of numbers at you right now so mm -hmm. that you can get a feel for how these decks work. Because if you just compare them directly against the old commander deck that you're used to or yeah. used to hearing us report about mm -hmm. in these budget upgrade guides, like you'll feel off yeah. because they're not a direct comparison. Right. So um, looking at the number of reprints in this deck, there are 28 reprints. Mm -hmm. The average number of reprints in a normal commander product is 60 to 70 reprints. Yeah. Which means number of new cards? The number of new cards just skyrocketed. Is humongous. And I think this deck has the most out of all the Warhammer ones. I think this one has, which is easier to do because it is a mono color deck compared to the other ones, which are three colors each. Yeah. What, uh, how many new cards do we got? 42. 40. More than half the deck. Well, not more, but about half the deck. Yeah. Okay. So, so if we have 42 new cards, 
and only 28 reprints, it means that this initial report of financial value will be totally skewed because yeah. we don't have prices for the brand new cards. Right. And a lot of times the brand new cards prices are all over the place and they don't settle for a long time. Yes. And so basically a large portion of this deck is unknown, but we've done some math for you. Yes. Okay. So first off, we're just going to do the raw numbers of just reprint value. Okay, the total amount of reprint value is $67. The number of car, the sum of cards above $2 is $56.50. Mm -hmm. And the sum of cards $5 or more is $37.50. And we're going to go over each one of those cards and their value in a minute. But before we get there, we need to compare those numbers with some older ones. Uh, those numbers might sound low to you because they are. You know, we're used to seeing reprint value of these decks as being like 80, $85. Actually, 80 is the average over right. the last four sets. Mm -hmm. uh, and so seeing a number of 67 compared to 80 makes it seem like this is a bad value. Yeah. But remember, we have $80 worth of value across 60 to 65 cards versus $67 across 28 cards. Yeah. So what we've done is we've said, look, we're still going to take the value of those 28 cards, but we're going to try and estimate the value of those brand new cards. Then we get this interpolated deck value of $110. So taking these two numbers, we kind of get the value that lets us compare it to previous decks. Mm -hmm. Now, some people have said that this is far too much math and intricacy to go over in a budget upgrade guide. Yeah, who said that? Uh, <laughs> who said that? <laughs> who said that? But do you know what? We know that you care about the numbers and we just wanted to give you, be really transparent, just give you all of the numbers from the beginning and give you numbers that are, that make sense that you can actually use. Because honestly, just the, hey, $67 of reprint value doesn't really give you a number you can use. Yeah. And so you, combining all of those numbers gives you a snapshot of what this deck can actually produce. And it could be also that by the time you're watching this, the other cards in this deck have already been priced out. And every here's the thing, everything changes. As yeah. soon as you yeah. see this, like all the reprints go crazy and yeah. all the new people go crazy about a new card. One new card spikes out of control. Yep. And so we're just working from what we have now and average scenarios because We've done this for a lot of commander decks. <laughs> yeah. We've mathed a lot of commander decks. A lot decks of out. math. Chuck's been doing the math. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so let's go over the notable reprints. Okay. So yeah. first we're going to talk about the cards that are over five dollars. Then we're going to talk about every card over two. So why don't you lead us through this uh wonderful journey? Okay. Uh first one is Darkness, which uh is a sixteen dollar card to my surprise. Woo! Sixteen dollars and twenty cents for darkness. I did not know this. That's a surprise to me. Uh next one is Living Death at eight fifty. After that is Cage Sun, which is a good one. At six ninety, we got Mystic Forge at five ninety five, Gilded Lotus at four fifty five, Endless Atlas at four fifty, Reliquary Tower at three eighty, Thought Vessel at three fifty, and Mutilate at two seventy five. Woo! Nice little group of reprints. Yeah. If we go back and look at it, Darkness is a fog, so that's a pretty narrow reprint. But we've yeah. got a lot of things in here uh, that deal with mana. So Cage Sun doubles mm -hmm. our mana. Gilded Lotus gives us extra mana. You know, Thought Vessel gives us some extra stuff. We've got two board wipes on here, Living Death and Mutilate. Yeah. Uh, we got some artifact synergies with Mystic Forge, Thought Vessel, the Endless Atlas. So a lot of good stuff that I can see really matches into this deck. Yeah, it's, um, it's. I mean, Darkness itself. Also, by the way, most of these cards have new art exclusive. I mean, every card in this deck oh. is brand new art that, you know, is Necron lore specific, which is so we crazy. Got, like, Even Necron. the swamps. Like every card, no no joke. So uh, if you want to see some new art, usually when you do commander cards. So the soul deck, ring and the unstable everything. obelisk and the, oh man, so that's so cool. Not only are they reprints, they're reprints with new art, like new lore specific art. Like how cool is that? They're that's really cool. cool. Yeah. It makes, I think it really makes the entire deck flavorful. Mm -hmm. It also makes me a little bit sad that you're about to put 10 cards in that have I like know. Old, <laughs> have I know. old magic art, right? It was so hard to do. <laughs> I tried to keep it a, uh, uh, as close to as Necron as possible. I tried, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> okay. So we got the, the reprint value here. Hopefully you have a good idea of what's where the value lies in this deck. Uh, but let's talk about sort of the best cards yes. in this deck. What are the standout cards? Grav, you've ana uh, analyzed this deck. You found out what its weaknesses are. You've upgraded it. What are some of the standout cards that you want to call attention to? 
Okay, the first one is Scepter of Eternal Glory. This is a four mana artifact, legendary artifact. Uh, tap to add one mana of any color. And then also the second tap ability, tap to add three mana of any one color. Activate only if you control three or more lands with the same name. Now, this is a monocolor deck, so hey, pretty easy. Wait, so four mana taps for three. Four mana taps for three. In your colors. Pretty good. Like we just mentioned, Gilded Lotus was on this list. Yeah. It was 450. So what is this going to be? It's got to be at least 450. It's got to be at least 450. <laughs> I mean, it does but like, have... why am I paying five mana when I could be paying four, so right? So it does have the clause of like, you know, three lands, the same name or whatever. But So you got to be a monocolor deck, yeah, right? Yeah, you got to be a monocolor. Yeah. You, would, you really wouldn't play this on a two-color deck. Um, Guild of Lotus, you can get away with that. But this one, yeah, monocolor, you want this. This is a good ramp for monocolor. That's this great. This is awesome. Okay. Uh, next card is Mystic Forge, which is a four mana artifact. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast artifact spells and colorless spells from the top of your library and has a tap ability. Tap and pay one life. Exile the top card of your library. So if you don't like what you see up there, hey, get rid of it. Cast I, I else. would go back and look at the other page if it wasn't a paper airplane across the room. Uh, how many artifacts again were there in this deck? I believe there were 40, no, uh, 49. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Play the tape back, editors. <laughs> Why did you come up with those papers? Why did you do this? <laughs> it's tradition. <laughs> I think they were 49. Okay. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but we'll say. But the, the, uh, even if you, this is more, this is going to cast just about half your deck. So if literally not, it's going to go crazy. You're going to be able to play crazy. half the deck off the top. Yes. L almost all of your cards. Okay. So that is fantastic value for sure. That That's that's good stuff. Okay. My my next two are kind of flavor ones just because I oh, like okay. them so much, but they're good cards too, I think. Well, you made some choices based on flavor. So it makes some sense that you make some choices based yes. on flavor right now. So uh, this card is a new one called Shard of the Void Dragon. It is four and three black. So seven CMC it is a creature, Catan which is also a new creature type. Mm -hmm. uh, it is flying, it is a 7-7, seven, seven. it has two abilities. Spear of, the F Spear of the Void Dragon is the first one. Whenever Shard of the Void Dragon attacks, each opponent sacrifices a non-land permanent. Now you're thinking to yourself, like, oh, if it attacks me, I'll just sacrifice an artifact. But wait, it has a second <laughs> ability. Okay. Matter Absorption. Whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield or is put into exile from the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on Shard of the Void Dragon. Now, yeah. Okay, so wait, okay. Like, I know that you're about to make a case for this wonderful Void Dragon, uh, but it's a seven drop, uh -huh. and it needs to attack to get its trigger, and it's still just an edict. Like, someone can sacrifice something irrelevant. Yes, this is true. Can they this sacrifice all... just, a, just a dumb token that they have? Uh, it is a, it does not say non-token. Each opponent sacrifices a non-land permit, so they could, but if they sacrifice a treasure, it still counts as an artifact. Oh, the second ability. Yeah, it says artifact goes to the graveyard. Hey, treasures still go to the graveyard and trigger this ability. Mm. So do clues. So, so like, if they are going to, I mean, they, I, obviously your opponent will be smarter than that and probably not do it. But if they think like, ah, whatever, they can get the counters. Hey, you get a bigger, you get so a this thing, this thing can get pretty big. Can, and can. you can you can and, trigger these plus one plus one counters yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And so what you want is uh, obviously it's a reanimation deck. You want this in your graveyard early so you can reanimate mm -hmm. it for much more uh, efficient than seven mana. You get it for one with a reanimator, two with an animate dead, like something to get this out so early. So here's your vision. And your vision is basically, okay, I'm going to cheat this out yes. well before turn seven. Yes. I'm going to attack. I don't care that I'm not getting the best thing. I'm still yes. getting a three for one. Uh, and then you're going to sacrifice your own artifacts crack your own treasures, mm -hmm. you know, this thing's going to start getting huge and then really pressuring people. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the commander format right now, I feel, is very treasure-centric right now. Like, mm -hmm. there's lots of cards that make them. Lots of people love playing those cards, and this is going to punish those people a little bit if you can get it out early. If you get it out late, people probably won't care so much about treasures, but if they're going to combo off, it'll get a big creature. At least, maybe they won't kill you with that combo. I like that. I like that. Especially if this is, like, a graveyard deck, you want to pay attention to the big fatties that you can get, like the top end of your yes, deck, right? exactly. Love it. Another uh, graveyard-centric card, this is another card uh, that's uh, new, called Out of the Tombs. It is two and a black. Enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, put two Eon counters on out, of, on out of the tombs. Then mill cards equal to the number of Eon counters on it. So uh, it also has a second ability. Let me read this first. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, instead return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Mm, okay. If you can't, you lose the game. So 
this card doesn't do anything when it comes out. It has to get to an upkeep to do anything. But and then when it does something, it only mills you two. It mills you two, and the next turn it mills you four, and next yeah. turn it mills you six. And so eventually, you're going to run out of cards in your graveyard. But how cool and flavorful is that? Is you put everything from your library into your graveyard, and you're going to have other cards that are, mill, that are milling you anyways, right? Okay, yeah. So eventually you get to the point where you can just have no library, and you will just continually cast stuff from your graveyard. I do like the idea of having just no library and you're like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm oh, I just don't lose. I don't game. need to, I don't need to draw cards. I'm just going to like, just put things onto the battlefield. Now someone uh, bazooka bogs you while you have no library game over. Fun. <laughs> That's great. Sure. Is this but, the category for the best cards? You just, you just said this does nothing to begin with. Look, and then how long does it take you? This is a hundred card deck. How many two, uh, if you plus, set on two plus three. four is six plus six is 12 plus eight is 20 plus 10 is 30 plus 12 is 42 plus 14. I mean, you're also drawing cards. You're also milling other cards. There's a lot of turns and I'm not empty deck yet. But it, it is also doing the thing your deck wants, which is adding cards to your graveyard. Okay. Which is, which is how your deck powers through stuff anyways. You want cards to your graveyard. That's good. And I was thinking, I was looking at this compared to something like uh, a new card that just came out in SNC, which was Cemetery Tampering which okay. does a similar thing where it's a hideaway thing, but it also mills at the top of your upkeep, but it only mills, I believe, two cards, maybe three, I don't remember. But basically, this adds up. This is going to be a spectacle once you put it down and get a few turns into it. So I, I know it's not the best card, but I think it's a fun card. I'm pretty sure down here, it says like best cards of the deck. And then, then there's but an asterisk <laughs> right next to it that says also fun. <laughs> okay, but this is, I do agree though, that it is very flavorful. Yeah. And the idea that it, it's sort of like they're starting off their empire and a couple people are awake yeah. and then they just keep like rising people from the dead and it gets mm -hmm. more and more and more and more and your graveyard gets bigger and bigger and your resources get bigger and bigger and then at the end of it, it's just like, no, we play by different rules because mm -hmm. we're skeleton artifact space people. Yes. And then we're just going to keep bringing the biggest things back from the graveyard to the battlefield. And do you want to actually kill them? Because you can't, because then it's just going to go into our graveyard again. And yeah. then I'm going to bring it back to the battlefield yeah. again. And, and this is every time you draw a card that uh, ability triggers. So if you draw three cards while your library is empty, that's reanimate three creatures. Oh, I like I so, like that a so lot. Like, I, I do like that a lot. And and this is a card you could put in, into a, a Demir like mill deck for yourself. Like it doesn't have to be in the mono black deck. You could move this somewhere else. So this is one of the cards I think will I think it'll see some play. I think it'll see some play. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> okay. We'll see. I'm gonna play it. Tell us in the comments down below. Okay. So those are the most impressive cards. I really like how you divide it up into sort of the flavorful cards, mm -hmm. the ones that felt very Necron, mm -hmm. and also the ones you're like, look, these artifacts are actually really, really good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're about to talk about the 10 cards you have chosen mm -hmm. to go into this deck to upgrade it, to really make it hum, and also to make it f more flavorful, even more flavorful. But before we do, we're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Josh, how often do you find yourself trying to solve a problem? Uh, I mean, what do you mean? I'm a magic player. That's all I do all day. Exactly. We use the problem solving part of our brain a ton, which means that we want it to be working at peak performance. Are you about to tell me about a superfood or something? <laughs> Later. First, I want to talk to you about BetterHelp, the simple way to get access to affordable professional online therapy. For me, talking to a therapist hasn't just been venting about problems. It's about learning to work towards solutions. So basically finding the right line, but in life. Exactly. And BetterHelp makes getting started really easy. Just fill out a brief survey and get matched with a therapist. Plus, you can switch at any time. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. So if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. Well, that sounds like the winning play. So are you ready to record the podcast now? No. First up, Hikama. It's the ultimate uh, superfood. No, no, no. I read no, about it one time. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash command zone today to get 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash command zone. Again, betterhelp.com slash command zone. Welcome, slumbering fools, to the dream world, where I, Ashiok Nightmare Muse, can give you any nightmare I wish. And my favorite, you're speaking in front of a class and realize you're in your underwear. <laughs> Shame. Of course, if you're wearing me undies, that nightmare may be a dream come true. Especially with me undies latest Halloween collection. I warn you, they are scary. Scary soft. So don't miss their limited edition prints like Jack Attack or Spell It Out. 
available in undies, socks, bralettes, and more. And everything is made with the frighteningly comfortable micro-modal fabric. Plus, if you slept on your Halloween shopping and need a last-minute costume, you can transform into a spooky skeleton with a Lazy Bones loungewear set. Match with your boo or an animal familiar in sizes from extra small to 4XL to make it your softest Halloween ever. <laughs> The scary soft hype is real, everyone. If you're not impressed with me undies, your first pair is on us. That's a promise. To get 20% off your first order and free standard shipping on US orders, go to meundies.com slash command. That's meundies.com slash command. Crap, I'm late for draft night. I guess I'll just grab takeout. It's the fastest, cheapest thing. That's a factor fiction. Factor fiction. Uh, how long have you been out there? Longer than it takes to prepare a meal from factor. That's for sure. You see, Factor delivers nutritious, chef-crafted meals that are ready to eat in just two minutes. So takeout being the fastest, cheapest option is now a pure fiction. Factor is perfect for the on-the-go lifestyle. With no shopping, cooking, or cleaning, you'll have even more time to do the things you love. Every meal is dietitian approved. And with 30 plus choices each week, including vegetarian and protein plus options, you can eat healthy without ever getting bored. Oh man, that sounds great. I really wish I had a Parmesan. Parmesan crusted chicken with Italian veggies. Wow, this is delicious. Wait, where were you hiding it? You don't want to know. And that's a factor fact. Head to go.factor75.com slash command130 and use code command130 to get $130 off across six boxes. That's code command130 at go.factor75.com slash command130 for $130 off. Welcome back. We're going to talk about what 10 cards go in, what 10 cards you pull out, and we're going to do all of it for under $30. Now, you spearheaded this entire deck, you analyzed it, you broke it down, you found the exact right cards that are going into it. What was your process for picking these cards? Mm -hmm. So uh, we went a slightly different direction than we normally do this time because a few of us here are Warhammer lore nerds. Uh, we did some flavorful ads. And I'm not, I'm not saying just flavor, but they're also, you know, actually make the deck work too. But I tried to pick a few cards that actually fit with the theme of Necrons while also activating the game plan of the commander I've chosen. Got it. Was that was that hard or do you feel like a lot of the cards just um, naturally fit together? Some of these naturally do fit together just because reanimation is such a big part of Magic the Gathering. That was smooth. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so reanimation is a big part of Magic the Gathering in general, so there, it wasn't too tough. So the Necrons um, actually just fit in really well, being like, yeah. look, graveyard, or reanimation, artifacts, they're all really like yeah. powerful strategies in Commander, and so naturally they just fit well together. And I'd recently just built uh, Glissa, uh, the Trader deck, which I played on Extra Turns, which had a lot of similar cards uh, to this deck that I was like, oh, they're almost interchangeable, the cards I want to put in and take out. So nice, there's, nice. A, there's a few choices of that in here. All right. Uh, so let's start us off. Let's start off. Number one is Armix Filigree Thrasher. Now, uh, this is a two and a black for a three, two legendary artifact creature golem, sadly not Necron, but it does look Necron-esque. Um, hang on. I got to evaluate if it looks like yeah, a Necron. Yeah, go ahead. Because I know nothing about Necron, so yeah, let's go and see. You think? It's got a skeletal nature to it. Oh, I got to agree. This looks this looks Necron Necron like. Just get a green highlighter and just color over it, and you get some Necron. Actually, right, yeah, it definitely does need some green <laughs> in the background. Right it needs a little more green. It needs a little more green. So this is a legendary artifact creature, Golem, a three-two that reads: Whenever Armix Filigree three. Filigree Thrasher attacks, you may discard a card. When you do, target creature defending player controls gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is a number of artifact X is a number of artifacts you control plus the number of artifact cards in your graveyard. So you're gonna be controlling a lot of artifacts. Yes. There are gonna be artifacts in your graveyard because a lot of your commanders do and stuff do that anyway. That is what you want. Uh, and then also this helps facilitate discarding like the big thing that you wanna reanimate a little bit later. It does all the things. It okay. Is a kitchen, uh, uh, a Swiss army knife. Not a kitchen knife, that's a different kind of card. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stab people. Uh, it is a Swiss army knife that this deck really uh, uh, works with. It does have a partner. Sadly, I, I don't have a partner to put in here. Uh, I did have Keskit also initially in this, which is the partner from Commander Legends that kind of uh -huh. pairs well with this. Also is artifact based, but is not an artifact itself. So um, yes, I think this card does everything you want this deck to do. Perfect. 
uh, flavor flavor wise, is there any reason why like uh, someone a filigree thrasher or anything like that or would fit in, or is it just like you look at it and you feel Necron? Yeah, looking at it, it it's uh, it's very discombobulated and built of a lot of things. Actually, the Phyrexians themselves are a bit uh, flavor wise kind of Necro Necron esque mm. in the way they kind of look. Some of them are, but uh, this one reminded me of the there's like. Uh, the Necron also have this sort of like pseudo Egyptian almost theme where like oh. they're, they have a bunch of like, uh, large, uh, scorpions, the, a lot of scorpion based, uh, vehicles and, uh, military stuff. So this one kind of reminded me of that. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, next up. Next up, the always classic Bolus's Citadel. This is three and three black for legendary artifact. Uh, you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. And also tap, sacrifice 10 non-land permanents. Each opponent loses talent life. Everybody knows this card probably if you played Commander for uh, over a year, I'd say. It's a very good card. It's a very good card. I mean, it's good in any artifact deck. It's very good in this deck because look at this. Does that already not look Necron to you? Like, Actually, yes, it does look. It, like, it does look Necron. It a little already bit. Yeah. looks like a Necron tomb. Like they literally. Does it detract this. that it says the word Bolus though? Because it's not the Necron, so it's the Bolus system. I mean, Bolus. It's like magic IP directly, <laughs> like shoehorned into the Necron world. Bolus had his own dynasty, and these are Necron dynasties. So maybe there was a, a Necron lord named Bolus. Okay, it's well, possible. You did mention that, like the the. Uh, like the sort of Egyptian kind of yeah, theme exactly. a little bit. Amon and I can see the Amonkhet kind of, yeah. Yeah, they have tombs and this is a living tomb and also it helps you cast uh, a bunch of cards in your deck. I mean, it's an artifact that usually wins games when people when it comes down, people are like, okay, I gotta get rid of that. It's Bolas's Citadel. Yeah, um, I, I like it. It's I also card. like that we have a commander whose strategy is to go wide to put multiple tutus on the battlefield. And so activating this is not outside of the realm of possibility. Yes. You know, it just takes a couple triggers of extra tutus where you're just like, I'm gonna tap Bolas's Citadel and just drain you all for 10. Yes. You know, and yeah. this that's a good way of pressuring people's life totals in a deck where you are going to be sort of doing drains for a little bit or giving something menace and getting in for damage. And as of now, only 450. What a steal. Fantastic. Get a bunch of these. What a beautiful card. A whole binder page. Yeah. You know, a whole, <laughs> a whole Ultra Pro uh, big binder page. So you yeah. got a full 16, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do it. All right. Next up is Disciple of the Vault. For one black, you get a creature, a human cleric, a human. What? Ew. Not even an artifact? I mean, it is a disciple. It's not like they're not a Necron themselves. They're just a disciple of the Necrons. Yes. You know? uh, so this oh, did, I, did I just like preempt exactly what you were thinking? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yes. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the flavor in just a second. Okay. <laughs> uh, whenever the card reads, it's a 1-1 one, one for one black. Uh, whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from play, you may have target opponent lose one life. Now, your deck has tons of artifacts. Mm -hmm. Lots of commander decks also have tons of artifacts and lots of people use treasures, clues. In such a artifact heavy meta that is everywhere right now, mm -hmm. this card for one mana just pings opponents left and right, just nonstop. And better than a lightning bolt, more than three damage. Oh yeah, I, I can almost guarantee it's gonna do <laughs> It's like more. 10 damage or whatever like that, yeah. With the amount of treasures we see yeah. in our meta and you're probably seeing in yours, yeah, yeah like it's this is gonna do a lot of damage. Yeah, it's only $1.25 as of now and uh, it's, if you can get this out in turn one, great, but mm -hmm. It's likely a card you want to play before you do some sort of weird artifact sh uh, sacrifice shenanigans, is my guess, because then you get triggers off your stuff, but then also, you know, other stuff that people are trying to maybe stop you to using treasures or their dang smothering tides or whatever. Um, Flavor-wise, Disciple of the Vault, the vaults are stuff that, you know, are like tombs that uh, the Necrons are stuck in. And this actually, imagery-wise, I think this is probably what the Necrons look like before they became Necrons, because they were oh, flesh cool. and blood. This is what they, they had, no one really knows what they look like before. There's not really art for that. But I, I like to imagine this is what they look like before they became Necron, before they had uh, biotransference happen to them, which is the, the process they went through. So that's the flavor win here. I think it's awesome. Love it. All right, what's next? Next up, this is an odd one. This is an odd one. Uh, this is Egon, God of Death. Uh, and its backside, Throne of Death. Now, for two and a black, you get Legendary Creature, God. Uh, it is a 6-6 six, six that reads, Death Touch. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile two cards from your graveyard. If you can't, sacrifice Egon and draw a card. Now, don't make a face at me, DJ. I'm not making a face at you. This is this is a 6-6 six, six that 
when you exile two artifacts, you get two tutus. That's 10 power and toughness. That's a grave titan. Okay. Yeah, that was my defense, but you kind of... Oh, sorry. Took my, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. But also what I want to talk about actually is the flavor win of the other side. Yeah, I know you're in love with the backside of this. Yes. So the backside is Throne of Death. For one black, you get a legendary artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. And then for two and a black, you can tap it to exile a creature card from your graveyard to draw a card. Now, so for one black, if you get this on turn one, you get to mill a once a turn already, which is fantastic. But then you can activate your commander at any time for three mana to draw a card and make two two twos. That's good. Also, the Throne of Death, thrones uh, are a thing that Necron Dynasties also have. Oh, yeah. Like they are, if you look at any pictures of the Silent King, like he's usually sitting on a throne. Uh, I don't think he is on this one. Maybe he is. Did you say if you look at any picture of the Silent well, King, he'll be on a throne? And I pick up the only picture of the Silent King I have. It's, it, that actually might Throneless. be the- Throneless. That actually might be a throne behind him, actually. That, I, I, I stand by what I said. Um, well, that's the same art. <laughs> I know. It's bigger, though. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That could be a throne. He could be- Standing He's on standing up, dude. He doesn't sit. He's a standard. <laughs> He's got a standing desk and everything. He's got a standing desk. But yeah, Throne of Death. Flexibility of skeletons is actually not that great. It's weird, so I know. This is a 25 cent card, which I think is kind of wild, but it is a legendary artifact. And on the other side, if you get it late game, you're like, hey, I can just play this as a 6-6 six, six that also does what your commander wants it to do. So there's quite a few even, ways to even do Even late game, I'm wondering if I just like want to play it for one and just start tapping and I drawing mean, cards, that, right? That's also very good. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I like really it. like it. Uh, and the last flavorful card that I have is uh, a classic Nim Death Mantle. Uh, this card is $3 and it is two mana. Artifact equipment. Uh, equip creature gets plus two, plus two, has intimidate, and is a black zombie. And its second part is whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay four mana. If you do, return that card to the battlefield and attach Nim Death Mantle to it. Now, the deck wants things to come out of the graveyard, and this is accomplishing what your commander wants. If this thing yes. activates, you'll get the two two twos from your commander. I like that. Yeah. And it's, and it's doing, I mean, it's also like an artifact with green stuff in the background. Like, Flavorfully, it also just looks like a Necron card already, mm -hmm. but it, reanimation is the name of the game for Necrons. This is what they want. Got and it. your commander is probably going to become a target or one of your other very good creatures is going to become a target. So you want something to protect them. You got to leave a little mana open, but hey, it's good. You Nim's, can reanimate. Nim Death Mantle is kind of known out there for being a combo-y card. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you sacrifice something that generates you four or more mana and then you bring it back again or something like that. Is this? Are there any combos in this deck that can make this work? I don't think so, but okay. I could be wrong. I don't. I didn't see anything overt that could do it, but you could definitely add cards to it to make it do that. And what I think you, that if you have a commander that can benefit from it, if you have a little bit of combo, maybe a Crook Clan Ironworks or something ooh, like that. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Then what you could do is you could sacrifice the artifact creature that it's on and one of the zombies that your commander produces yes. to create four mana. It goes in the graveyard. You pay, That's the four mana you pay to bring it back again. And then you're up a whole zombie and you've, sort of created a loop so mm -hmm. there are ways that you can go infinite with nim death mantle and your commander and the tons of artifacts that are in this deck so there are ways for you to do it but uh, i think that you focused on the flavor and the pure reanimation of this yes nim death, nim death mantle is a very good card in uh another deck i play which is glissa which i mentioned before and i think it will also do wonders in this one with all the artifact creatures that you have doing stuff in the graveyard and on the battlefield perfect and i i just love the idea of like look you're just attacking with your creatures and then you end up getting that sweet trigger from your commander and still keeping those creatures on the battlefield fantastic yeah yeah all right next up noxious gear hulk this is where kind of the flavor stops. And I so just this thought, is the flavor stops here? It feels like noxious. I guess a gear hulk is a gigantic yeah, robot. Huh? Yeah. I mean, it's, gigantic robot and, and reanimated ancient skeleton is not, they're not exactly friends. Not exactly. I, I think you could, if you took a Sharpie and put some green color in here, you could do it, but there's like a flag in the background and mm, yeah, okay. it, it'll show up. But anyways, noxious gear hulk is a four and two black for artifact creature construct. It is a 5-4 with Menace that reads, when Noxious Gearhulk enters the battlefield, you may destroy another target creature. If a creature is destroyed this way, you gain life equal to its toughness. Hey, it's artifact, it's a creature, it comes on the board and uh, kills something immediately and gains you some life. What's that to love? Perfect. I mean, if you're moving things in and out of the graveyard, like having great powerful ETBs attached to them yeah. is going to be really good. So I think that this is a great inclusion. Solid include, and it's only 75 cents. Perfect. Easy 75 cents. All right. What do we got next? Next up is the most expensive card that I'm adding. 
And uh, the cheapest manu uh, mana wise, it's reanimate. For one black, you get to cast this sorcery, which reads, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. You lose life equal to its converted mana cost. Now, this triggers your commander, and this triggers, uh, you know, a bunch of other stuff in the deck, but also reanimates the stuff that you're already milling into your graveyard. Like the Catan I mentioned earlier, Shield of the Void Dragon, or Shard of the Void Dragon, uh, sorry. Um, this is the card you want to play. Now, it is expensive. It is $10 for this card, which is the top end of cards you want to put into this, but it is easily the best reanimation spell, I would say, in Magic the Gathering. So, in terms of reanimation, the... Basically, the, the success of a reanimation spell has to do with how much mana you can skip, like how much mana you can cheat. Right. And the cheaper the spell, the more mana you can cheat for what you get back. Right. Uh, and then also how quickly you can have it. So basically, if you cheat 10 mana, but it's turn 10, it doesn't matter as much. Right. You know, and so if you can get it, cheat a lot of mana, but also get it out as fast as possible, that makes what you reanimate the most powerful. And so one mana is by far the best thing that you can do when it comes to reanimation. Yeah. So yes, this is the most powerful. I think I think it's awesome. Obviously, there's a bunch of other reanimation spells you can get. Animate so Dead. So people and, could add like Animate yeah. Dead or Necromancy or other yeah. stuff in here too. Depending on how many mill effects you add to the deck that... Uh, dance of the Dead has skeletons on it. But do they, Necrons dance? Mm, oh, they hate dance. They hate dancing. They hate it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, reanimates all around good card for any deck that wants a reanimation stuff to happen. Obviously, it triggers your commander from taking an artifact Perfect. from your graveyard to play. It does all the good stuff. It is good. Put it in the deck. All right, next up, we have Scrap Crawler. This is a three mana artifact creature construct. It is a three two that reads, whenever Scrap Crawler or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand target artifact card in your graveyard with lesser mana value. Oh, perfect. You're just churning through your deck. Your your graveyard is already filled up with stuff. Yeah. I mean, this sounds like a like a no brainer. Perfect. So it's one dollar for this card, and I will give this. I will give an asterisk to this card. A small disclaimer that this card might make your turns a bit longer than you want them to be. Mm. Most of the time when I see this card on the battlefield, and I've played it a few times, um, you will be thinking a lot about what to bring back and when to bring it back, because oftentimes when this is out, you have ways to putting artifacts into your graveyard, which will bounce another card in your hand, and then it just happens a lot. You bring so. back your Commander Sphere, and then you play it, and then yeah. you tap it, and you sacrifice it, and then you bring back your Mind Stone, and then you're like, okay, yeah. then I'm going to play that and tap it and like sacrifice it and all this other stuff. So yeah. it's very good. It does what your commander in this deck, uh, Imatech, wants to do. But I will just put that disclaimer that it might make your turn a little bit longer. So I would say, obviously, the best way to get around that is just to play the card in your deck a lot, and eventually you'll get good with working out your lines of play, figuring out what you want to get when. But and I think a lot of people play Scrap Trawler in a really competitive way where they're planning on getting back their like mana crypts or their zero mana oh, rocks yeah, right. and other stuff where you don't have to, you can just like have your cool four drop die yeah. and then just get back your cool three drop that yeah. you milled earlier on. Exactly. It's great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. All right. Next up, we have Shimmer Mirror. This is Artifact Creature Mirror. It is a 2-2 that reads Flash. You may cast Artifact Spells as though they had Flash. Now, as we had talked about before, most of this deck is Artifacts. It's the like majority of, of it. Yeah. Um, and I tried to actually put in as many Artifacts as I took out. I can see that, yeah. And maybe a little more, I'm not sure, but because uh, I, I guess we'll talk about the cards you took out. But uh, this card basically, I mean, the Dalkin Ori is very powerful. It's also very expensive. I couldn't afford it in this budget upgrade, mm -hmm. but this is this might even be better though. This might having an some, artifact creature might even be better than right than having Vidalcan Order. In some cases, it might be better, but basically, you can play this at the end of uh, the person before you use end step, and then after that, you're just like, yep, pass. Like literally, all of your all of your Necrons are all artifact creatures, and so yeah. at any time you can just flash them in. They can block. Uh, a lot of them have cool attacking abilities, so mm -hmm. people can't really prepare for it. They can just kind of come out of nowhere. I yeah. love it. Yeah, only twenty five cents too. What a cheap, cheap card. Great. All right. Next up this is the last one. Next up is Sir Conrad the Grim. Uh, this is three and two black for a legendary creature, Human Knight. It is a 5-4 that reads, when another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. And then for one and a black, you can also have each player put the top card of their library into their graveyard. 
This thing is going to do so much damage. It does everything. With all of the milling and the bringing things to the graveyard and back again, it's just going to do a ton of damage. It does everything. And it's only uh, $2 as, 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 as of now, which I think is crazy. Now, it's not an artifact. I wish it was, but if it was... I know, it's great. not an artifact. What about the flavor? Can we make Sir Conrad the Grim fit the Necrons at all? I honestly don't think so. If they saw a human, they would kill him immediately. <laughs> they would destroy him and the horse. He's noble a little bit. Does the nobility help? Or it's just like, it doesn't so. matter. They're, They're not going gonna... to like him. They're not. Uh, it's just not going to uh, happen. They're not going to be friends. Um, may, he's got an orb. Maybe they like the orb that's in his hand. He's grim. Oh, they like the grim part. They like sure. the grim. Okay. Sure. Maybe he could be like their weird uncle. <laughs> Sir Conrad the Grim. All right. Uh, so what's your total cost? All of these cards added up. Uh, doing the math here, the total cost is $23.25. It's so cheap. You had like six and a half more dollars left in your budget. You didn't yeah. even spend it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some honorable mentions then. Maybe you could add Oh, oh okay. Go for uh, it. Uh, first one is Ugin the Ineffable, which is a planeswalker that is basically uh, its most important ability here is that colorless spells cost two less to cast, oh, which means yeah. just about every artifact in your deck is two mana cheaper. It just make a, everything way cheaper. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It is a six mana planeswalker, but it, I it's think- also It's also a removal spell. Manifests yeah. from some things. That's Would true. They, yeah. Here's the most important thing. Would they get along with Ugin? Ooh. Oh, He's you know He's a spirit what? dragon. He's not a real dragon. Spirit dragon. I would say probably not. No, they hate everyone equally. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're, okay. Not, they're not very friendly at all. <laughs> probably not. Uh, next up is Deadly Dispute, which is just a great uh, two mana uh, spell that says uh, you can sacrifice an artifact or creature. You get to draw two cards and make a treasure token. Uh, you just like the, hey, I wanted a little bit more draw. I, mm -hmm. I'm okay if things go into graveyard. Tr getting a treasure is actually surprisingly good. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. another artifact. I can, yeah. I can see that. But you know what? You're, you're just like, look, this is a big enough impact to be able to get into the top 10. Yeah. I'm not going to put like a little card draw spell in there. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. There was a bunch of other cards. Buried Alive is another one that uh, will take three cards from your deck and just put them, three creatures from your deck, and just put them in your graveyard. So say you play this early, then you have three reanimation targets that you choose. It's a pseudo tutor because you're yeah, yeah, yeah. in your graveyard for purposes of getting them out. But you also put like three combo pieces that you need for effects to happen into your graveyard. All right. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Uh, what about, what do you think about something like, uh, like Arcbound Ravager that, you know, has like plays around with artifacts or like Steel Overseer. Those are classic, oh, like yeah. artifact matters kinds of cards. Yeah. Uh, uh, Foundry Spectre is another one where, uh, oh, yeah, Joy yeah, is yeah, familiar. Yeah, yeah. Like anything that makes artifacts cheaper is to get this deck out faster. Cause it, it does run a bit slow sometimes, but yes, those are all, there's so many cards that I made a list of 30 basically I ended up with. And I was like, I gotta pair this down to 10. So, so uh, when you, when you chose, you were like, look, I wanted to go Necron. And so I'm yeah. not going to go with like these like beasts or constructs or these humanoid type things. Yeah. If it's a human, it really needs to be ma like matter, which is why I like Sir Conrad the Grimm is like the only one, right? Yeah. And you're he was like, he's one. so good. Yeah, and you're like, like oh, so, am he, I going to include him? He does everything you want. So like, yeah, I had to include him, but yeah, that's what I was going for. I was going for flavor more than I was. Uh, no, I like the balance that you struck because like, I think course. that a lot of people are going to get this deck because they they want a Necron deck. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And obviously you can get it, tear it apart, make it as anything that you want. But if you're only replacing 10 cards, this is still a very Necron heavy deck. So yeah. keep the flavor, keep it going, make it feel good yeah. along with your, your play style. Love yes. it. Okay. All right, well, hang on. We've gone through all of the good stuff. We talked about the oh, yeah. amazing cool cards, but none of that stuff matters if we don't know what cards to take out, right? Right, yeah. Th these are hard cuts. I can't just play with 110 cards? Uh, you cannot, that's against the rules. Oh no. I know. What am I gonna do? Oh, wait, I made a list. Okay, great. Okay, okay cool. Let's talk about cards to take out. Uh, the first one is a ramp card. Gilded Lotus is the first one I chose. What's Gilded Lotus? What's Gilded Lotus? I thought you were a commander player. <laughs> It is a five minute artifact that reads. Lotus. They have different art. I don't know what it is it's, anymore because they have different art. It's right there. I guess <laughs> that's the other thing. A, a lot of the cuts were really hard to make because every card is flavored to Necrons. So like if you stick a card in here that isn't that art, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. This Guild of the Lotus looks awesome. It's, it's going to so be on cool. the art's going to be on the it's screen. It's so right now. cool. Yeah, yeah. It's so cool. I was going through looking for like a big lotus flower yeah. and it's just this green thing. It's awesome. Yeah, it's very cool. Okay, Guild of the Lotus is a five mana artifact that reads tap to add three mana of any one color. Now, as we had talked before, this deck has 14 pieces of ramp. I took one out because uh, this was the slowest piece of ramp. So yeah, I was like, I need to make cuts to make these 10 cards fit. And this was the slowest one. So I just took one out. Perfect. I think it'll be fine with 13. It'll be <laughs> fine, everyone. It'll be fine. All right, next one is this war, or sorry, the war in heaven. Uh, this one is uh, three and three black. It is a saga, enchantment saga. 
Uh, the first uh, saga uh, part, or sorry, the first, what is this called? The first chapter of the saga? Yeah. First chapter of the saga reads, you draw three cards and lose three life. Okay. Ambitions cost should cost four mana instead, and you're starting off with six, right? This is six. Okay, so it's got to do a lot more than that. Okay, yeah. good. So Okay, so chapter two, and this is, I think is the boringest one, mill three cards. Okay, that's not worth any mana. That's worth, so we're still feeling down. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Chapter three, uh, choose up to three target creature cards with total mana value eight or less in the gra- in your graveyard. Return them each to the battlefield with a Necrodermis counter on it. Their artifacts in addition to their other types. Okay, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. But I see what you're talking about because you basically, you play this and it starts, it's at six mana. Yeah. And then you need extra chapters, like two extra turns to be able to get that big value. Yeah. It's it's just a bit too So I wish the second chapter did something more than mill three cards. Yeah. Like if it milled like 10 cards or something, like do something. That'd be really cool. Like do something big. Like three is such a boring number for this. I can see how this could be an easy cut because you're just like, look, it's just some extra card drop. Yeah. I, I just thought of something. Yeah. Uh, for Phyrexian scriptures. Did you think of that card? I did think of that card. I did that, think of because that card. basically that's also, I, I know it's off track, but that's also a saga. Yes. And then basically it makes something an artifact. All your things can be artifacts anyways, but then it destroys, the final chapter is it, or the yeah. second chapter is, is that it destroys all non-artifact creatures. Correct. Yeah. And you're of all artifact creatures. It's so yes, cool. it will do a board wipe. Uh, and does it sound, it kind of sounds a little it, bit Necron-y, right? It does. Scriptures, I mean, yes. It's uh, very necron right? have that. And you said Phyrexians were very Necron-like. Also true. Also, I am getting the ding, hang ding, of ding. this 40k. I'm basically an expert now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, basically. Um, yes, I, I did have that on my short list. The reason I took it out was every time I actually played the card at a table, it was a warning sign that everybody said, oh, my yeah, board's right. going to be gone in a, in, a, in, a, in a turn. I won't do anything. Okay. And it's like, okay, so I didn't do anything. <laughs> you're you're absolutely right. Yeah. But okay. um, yes, yeah, so that's why I took out. The also, board. there is a board wipe in this in this deck that we that we didn't talk about that it also just destroys all non-artifact yes. creatures. And so you already have that effect in this deck already. So I don't know if you necessarily need a second copy. Yeah, I didn't think I, but it I was But it felt gonna... so flavorful. I felt smart for thinking of it. It is, yeah. As you read a saga you're already. Good okay, sorry. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, next one is, hey, it's the $16 reprint, Darkness. Uh, one black, prevent all combat damage that we dealt this turn. It's an instant. Um, so I took this out because it doesn't really make sense to play in an aggro deck. It's yeah. a good card, put it in something else, but like, it doesn't really make sense here. Uh, very rarely are you going to be in a race situation where you need to fog someone's attack against you. Yeah. Uh, and then if you're attacking someone and things go wrong and you need darkness that's i don't know if it's quite worth a card yeah i'm glad they reprinted i'm glad it's oh, in here but yeah. i think it's a quick cut yeah absolutely absolutely all right next page next page you say huzzah okay so what if we need i'm gonna keep mine just in case we need yeah that. okay okay next one this one was a little tougher one endless atlas which is a simple two mana artifact huh. uh two and tap draw a card activate only if you control three or more lands of the same name now this seems like a perfect card for this deck yeah why did i take it out dj can you yeah. answer that um no, why'd you take it out? Okay. The reason I took it out is because I just found it kind of boring. <laughs> I just I just found it as kind of a boring card that I was not really in love with. Sure, you can draw a card every turn for two mana, but is that really better than Bolas' Citadel? I mean, no, it's definitely not as exciting as Bolas' Citadel. Um, how about, would you have... Would you have even liked better something like a Maze Mine's Tomb, Tome, or like Expedition Map? Because those have ways to get into the graveyard. Oh, would sure. those be a little bit? Yeah. Like, would that even be a little bit a better than the Sapless? It didn't have a way to like sack itself. So yeah, if it was an artifact that was like also had a third ability, hey, sack itself. To yeah, because it feels like this just sits on the battlefield and you're like, all right, I'm going to pay two into it and then I'll just draw a card every turn. It is a very consistent way to draw cards, but you know, is Commander all about drawing cards? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing we do in this format Rob. <laughs> i know i know but okay, I, but i but i do feel like it is a little bit underwhelming and you want is. things and you want things on theme right yeah i was going for theme more than than just win 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 and this here. doesn't even get into the graveyard it doesn't it do just the graveyard sits there thing. and draws cards yeah i wasn't i wasn't a big fan of it and okay. I admire the consistency of I this card i do think it's a good card though no yeah it, i'm not yeah. saying it's not a good card but i had to make cuts okay uh, okay, next one is Night Scythe. This is a three mana artifact vehicle. Uh, it is a three one flying. It has an ability called Invasion Beams. When Night Scythe enters the battlefield, create a two two black Necron warrior artifact creature token. And it has a crew too. So basically, it comes in with and makes a token that can crew it to do three flying damage, which I just thought was kind of slow and a bit vanilla. Does it do anything else besides just attack and fly? That's it. This doesn't do anything else. So it's pretty pretty simple. I mean, 
It's a three mana, three power flyer. Well, it needs to be crewed. But it comes with a crew. It does come oh, with a crew. Gosh, I don't know. Yeah. It's a three mana, three, three, one flyer. Like I want my, right. Like, Cause smugglers copter exists, right? Sure. Like that, that loots every time you attack a yeah. block. It also does three power in the air and it only costs two mana. I know it doesn't come with its own crew, but sure. like, come on, I can it, handle that. It has a much bigger payoff. Yeah, obviously. Wouldn't Smothers when, Cop would be good too? Because you're, you're discarding cards, you're looting them into your graveyard? Oh yeah, that would be good. Yeah, it just makes me feel like you're right for cutting like, that. Like, yeah, so when when your opponents have 120 life compared to you, well, yeah, adding yeah, them all yeah, up, yeah, like, yeah. is three damage really good? Unless you had a commander that triggers with this dealing damage to them, which I didn't think any of these did, and especially the one I chose mm -hmm. didn't do, doesn't have any graveyard synergy. It is an artifact, but eh. It makes a token all right, but it's a bit vanilla. You're right. I'm not I'm not a fan. Not a fan. All right. This next one is a unique one. It is Convergence of Dominion. It is a three mana artifact. Uh, its first ability is dy Dynastic Command Node. It reads, as long as you control your commander, activate abilities of cards in your graveyard cost two less to activate. This ability can't reduce the mana in that ability's activation cost to less than one mana. As a second ability, Translocation Protocols. Three and tap to mill three cards. Now, this one does a lot of stuff that we do want it to do. It makes How? unearth cards cheaper. Oh, unearth, okay. Because I was thinking about yeah. the activated abilities and we had that commander that dealt with artifact activated right. abilities, but there just weren't a lot of them. Yes, that's yeah. the other thing. So, the so main, unearth is the big one. Unearth is the big one. The problem is you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get there. First, three mana, this, this you play yeah, this. So three mana play this does nothing. Does nothing. Oh, mills can tap to mill. Three mana mill. Three mana to mill it? Yeah, to mill three cards. So, uh, yeah. So, and then you have to have your commander on the battlefield for it to actually be uh, uh, that first ability to trigger. And then it just reduces the cost by two. So it's a lot of hoops to jump through to get this. No, you want yeah, a cost reduction. Right. You want this to reduce the mana played out of this by like six or more before it becomes <laughs> worth the cost. Yeah, of like you no, need I mean, to like, use I this mean, like, over, over and over. Turns. Yeah, like, over turns. Like, you need to unearth like four or five things yeah. for me to finally want to play this. And even then, you're right. You're right for cutting that. I think in it's a different deck, slow, in a different deck, this could do something, but not this one, not not currently. All right, next one is Tomb Blade. It is four and two black for artifact creature, Necron. It is a five, four that reads flying. Whenever Tomb Blade deals combat damage to a player, that player loses life equal to the number of creatures they control unless they sacrifice a creature. And it also has unearth for six and two black, unearth for eight. Wow. Okay. So uh, this card basically says if you deal combat damage to a player, they have to either lose life to the number of creatures they control unless they sacrifice a creature. And then, and then they get to choose. If they have a hundred creatures, they just sacrifice a stupid creature. They sacrifice one if creature. If they have one creature, then they lose one life. Yeah. So it's, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's just bad. It's, just it's bad. also a very cool name, which makes me sad. Yeah. Like I, no. I was hoping this would be a, like a I play know. on Doomblade. No, yeah, no, 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 it's not. Sadly, no. But yeah, it is, a, It is. A, you know, it has unearthed, but at the same time. Easy cut. It, Good job. Yeah, it's, it's not great. It's not yeah. great. All right, next one is Necron Monolith. This is a seven mana artifact vehicle. It is a seven, seven flying indestructible. It has an ability called Eternity Gate. Whenever Necron Monolith attacks, mill three cards. For each creature card milled this way, create two, two, uh, sorry, create a two, two black Necron warrior artifact creature token. So, um, and it also has crew four. That's, that's important crew here. Four crew four is four. a lot. So you play this for seven, it does nothing. On, an, on a, in a vacuum, it does nothing. Yeah. It's a seven mana do nothing. Okay. Um, if you can crew it, then you can attack with a flying indestructible let's seven. Just, let's just assume that we can crew it, you know, to uh, properly evaluate it. Let's assume we can crew it. Okay. We can do flying damage in the air for seven. And does it have trample or anything like that? Doesn't have to trample. You mill three cards and then you get uh, a Necron for each creature you mill. Now, as we talked about the creatures in this deck, uh, there's a, you probably get a one and three chance, two and three. Maybe you get you probably get one hit every time, maybe two. So here's the thing: when I'm when I'm evaluating big, big, um, thing, yeah. like a seven uh, drop, yeah, a seven drops or big, big vehicles, I want to compare it to other big vehicles. So yeah. even though it's a completely different color, Parhelion, yeah, like I'm immediately, no matter what, getting big angels yes. when I'm attacking with it. And so like the fact that this is not even up to standard with another big um vehicle means yeah. that i also think it's like a little bit too much to do not good do not yeah. like it um all right next one is scorpec destroyer now that's a cool name two and two black for artifact creature necron uh it is a four two 
with Death Touch has an ability called Hyper Hyperphase Threshers. Whenever an artifact enters a battlefield under your control, Scorpec Destroyer gains first strike until end of turn. Um, so just first strike? That's it? That's it. That's it. So, well, I mean, then it means it can beat anything in combat. It has first strike. It already has Death Touch. So okay, first strike, yeah. Death Touch, it will kill anything in combat. Okay. But... You, so but you, it's just combat abilities. It's not like feeding the synergies or anything like that. It's just like, hey, I do like combat that. really nicely. So even if even if every turn this was a four two death touch with first strike, I'll just take four. Yeah, like why? Why would you? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like I'll take four. Yeah, it's it's an easy cut. Okay. <laughs> it's too vanilla. <laughs> it feels like a draft card. Um, okay, last but not least, shard of the Nightbringer. This is a big boy. This is five and three black for a creature, Catan. It is an 8-8 eight, eight with flying and in one ability that reads Drain Life. When Shard of the Nightbringer enters the battlefield, if you cast it, target opponent loses half their life, round it up. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. This is... You mentioned reanimating things. Why does it have that clause if you cast it? I want to reanimate yes, it. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, that's a big thing about this is what I want to reanimate this. It does nothing if you reanimate it. Um, it's big. By the time you play this on turn, let's say seven, maybe six. Yeah, I've already taken 16 damage from your four, two, first strike death touch. Yeah, people you have know, already so. lost <laughs> a, a bunch of life. So it's just pretty low impact for what it does. Just It's also not an artifact. It's a bit too expensive. Like it, it's, yeah. it's not an artifact. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Of that's this true. This entire deck. That's true. Wait, no. So the other Catan is also not an artifact. I do have to say that. So by that, the way, it looks, this is very like, it looks artifacty in it the does. frame. I have this to correct looks, myself. This looks very um, uh, misleading. Let's make that correction. Earlier, I said every creature in the deck is an artifact. That's not true. There are two Catans, and they're tricky because they look artifacty. They do. You're the, looking at the images right now. The cards have this like shiny metal sheen to them. They do all look them. very cool. That's by the way. Warhammer oh. treatment that they're doing. They look very cool, but it does make them look like they're all artifacts, but they're not. Yeah. 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 Oh so, man, I don't know if I like any of these Catans. Yeah, the other one I kept just because it at least has artifact synergy. Oh, you're right. And, it does have you, synergy, and, yeah. If you reanimate it, you can at least do stuff with it. But the other one, not so much. Good cut. Good not cut. So good much. cut. Not yeah. so much. That's it. That's 10 cuts. That's, I mean, I did not disagree with a single one of those cuts. Not even the and Atlas? No, not even the Atlas. Okay, cool. Not even the Atlas. I honestly think that there's, a, you were right, you know? This is a very hard deck to make cuts from because like I said, every card has unique art that fits flavorfully yeah. to this. So you kind of just want to sleep this and be like, yep, this is a pre-con that will always be Necron themed and very cool. But if you do get some altered cards, in here, that'd be kind of cool. If you, necron uh, you necronize some cards. You're just, you're just gonna get some green highlighter and just color things. Yeah. So be, like, be like, and now it's Necron <laughs> green. Easy, easy baby. Oh my gosh. Okay, so. Right, we've already gone through what legendary creatures could lead this deck. We've mm -hmm. talked about all of the standout cards, the cards that you're going to add into this deck. How does this play? Like, how what can people expect when they pick up this deck? They make your upgrades. What are they going to be doing at their commander tables? So it has a lot of synergies with uh, the cards in the deck. Um, obviously, artifact and graveyard are the big ones. Uh, it's a bit slower than it looks for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, it has a lot of ramp, but sometimes you just don't have things to ramp into. Mm -hmm. So you'll get a lot of ramp out, and then you'll be like, "Well, I hope I draw something big or mill something big." But if you mill something big, you don't need the ramp, right? You're paying. Uh, smaller effects to uh, cast those cards. There are reanimate spells in the deck, like there's Dread Return, which costs four or sacrifice three creatures, Yeah, but you're paying four for that, so. Yeah, okay. But it's a bit slower than it looks, but I think it plays great. I really enjoy the deck. Um, it's got a lot of cool creatures that you want to get out, and I think it does a lot of go wide stuff, If depending on the commander. I mean, the one I'm playing makes tokens, so obviously it does want to go wide as much as possible. Well, that is really cool because you can diversify the way that it plays. Like, you picked a commander that goes wide a little bit better, that aggro's a little bit better, right. but there are other commanders out there that might yeah. cheat things into play better. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like the paying right. life in order to put something onto the battlefield. Yes. So if you're cheating things, paying life to do it, getting something from the graveyard, that could be good. There are other cards in here that kind of uh, nickel and dime your opponent, a little bit of aristocrat strategy. Yes. Yep. You know, maybe you could supplement that with like a marionette master or other sacrifice mm -hmm. outlets, things like that. And so I think that there's a few different ways that you can take this, but one thing that's great is that they all overlap both in flavor, Ooh, yeah. which mm. is just top notch. It's oozing flavor. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, fantastic. But also just kind of like artifacts because yeah. it's like what a lot of artifacts do, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's really cool. Um, well, I think that you made 
excellent budget choices. Oh, thank you. Excellent. Absolutely. Um, but we're going to take it over to you, the audience, because crowdsourcing this information is the best way to get the best cards in this deck. So tell <laughs> us in the comments down below what upgrade cards you would put in this Necron Dynasties deck. And specifically if you can come up with really excellent yes. flavor yes and re like and reasons too we want we want really like detailed comments down there this is the card and by the way uh, like you were in the comments saying like i am a warhammer 40k genius and this is the mm -hmm. perfect flavor thing because people are going to be going down there they're going to be looking in the comments for the things that power up their deck but also the things that make it the most necrony possible yeah. don't just say worm coral engine okay i want to put that in here too but it's 30 dollars. okay put it no put that in the comments what? But, I mean, like, but, but you're right. It's a, but you're, but not, you're not a budget upgrade. <laughs> yeah, is one yeah. coil engine a really good fit? I mean, yes. I mean, I put it in every deck because I love that card. It's my. It's <laughs> one like, of my it's favorite like, cards of all time. But it is but, like. But that feels necrony. Like oh a yeah. Big worm it feels that, very like, necrony. Yes. Um. I. I, I think it'd be. A, 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 I wish it came in the deck. I wish that was like a. Mm. I mean, if it was like a reprint in the deck, could you imagine? I mean, it'd be very cool. I mean, I've seen Worm Coral Engine in the Jaredi deck. That's right. That's, that's right. Yeah. Back in my day. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and before we leave, one more shout out to our sponsor, cardkingdom.com slash command. Uh, if you want to pick up any of the cards we just talked about, like Worm Coil Engine, you can head over to cardkingdom.com slash command and pick up that as well as any of the singles we talked about here or uh, upcoming singles for Brothers War or Infinity, uh, just about every other set that comes out every two weeks because Magic the Gathering is nutso! <laughs> Also, if you're following along and adding cards to your Moxfield or tapped out deck list, there's a great feature where you can easily copy and paste the deck list into the Card Kingdom website and have the whole deck just ready to go in your card, just, just like that. It's super convenient and I love it. Plus, Card Kingdom is world renowned for their shipping speed. Every time I make an order, I am amazed how fast the cards are shipped and arrive at my place. It's amazing how fast they are. Seriously, crazy fast. And their customer service is top notch. Easily the best in the biz, in my opinion. Look, let's be honest, there's a new magic set coming out just about every month now, and you're going to need to buy cards from it. So just use cardkingdom.com slash command. And when you do, you'll be not only just buying cool cards from a great company, you'll be getting them super fast and you'll be supporting our show, which is awesome. Why wouldn't you do that? It's an easy win. And Ultra Pro is a great place to get sleeves like these awesome Necron sleeves. Ooh, Ooh. the silent You ink. definitely want Necron sleeves oh, on yeah. your Necron deck, right? Yeah, you, you absolutely do. do. Ultra Pro is a place to get them. It's the only place you can get these awesome Oof. sleeves and the deck box. Uh, UltraPro.com slash command for that. Uh, all right, let's do the cleanup step. Oh, we have an end step? Do you want to do an end step? Uh, I do. We usually, we oh. usually don't for, for budget upgrade guides, oh, but we, we, are here with, no, we are here with you and you deserve your end step. Okay. All and right. I want to hear about it too, because okay, I like hearing about interesting things from interesting people. Okay, cool. Uh, and for the end step, I want to talk about a TV show, which I don't know if you're watching, but... Uh, TV? I, I'm not, not usually, no. Huh. Oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, it's a TV show called Better Call Saul. Now, this is a TV show, uh, if you watch... I don't think I've ever heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it is essentially a prequel to Breaking Bad, uh, taking place uh, in the life of Jimmy McGill, Saul Goodman, who was the lawyer... Uh, in Breaking Bad. And actually, by the time this episode comes out, the entire series will be done. It's actually airing its last few episodes now while we recorded this. So that's why you're like really feeling it right now because oh, yeah. they're just finishing I'm up. I'm watching it week to week and it is a fantastic show. It is a... What makes it good? So it is a... I mean, if you like Breaking Bad, you'll love this. It is more... It's made by the same creative team. It's got a lot of the same actors. It does a lot of cool callbacks, which are essentially call forwards. Uh, because it takes place in the past. Um, Bob Odenkirk is an amazing actor, and so is Rhea Seahorn, who is the female lead in the show. Uh, it has comedy, it has drama, it has uh, a crime drama, it has legal stuff. Um, it has so much, it's also meticulously well edited. As an editor myself, as a video mm. editor, it is edited so well. The music is really well done. Everything about the show is top notch. It is easily the best show on TV right now, or at this the point you're watching this that just happened. Um, got a bunch of Emmy noms. Uh, it's a fantastic show. Uh, go watch Better Call Saul. I think most of it's on Netflix right now and the last season's on AMC. Fantastic show. Um, highly recommend it. Go watch it. Glowing praise for Better Call Saul. Go watch got it. Got you. Go watch it. It's very good. All right, let's do a uh, team thank you. Oh, don't hit the left. Ooh, nice. They're going to see that one. All right, let's do a big thanks to our amazing team here at the Command Zone. Let's go through these names. Holy cow, what a list. <laughs> Arthur Metacraft, Sean Giles, uh, Damon Lenz, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Craig Blanchett, Ashlyn Rose, 
Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Patrick Nunn, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Waldell, Grav Gulati, that's me, Truck Ty, Jamie Block, Evan Limberger, and Mitch Trafford. Special, and, oh, sorry, go for it. And I'm DJ. You can find me over at the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter at Jumbo Commander. You can also see me around here uh, at the Command Zone occasionally. Yes, the yeah. summer is when we have our beautiful DJ. Yeah. It's wonderful. Oh, thank you so much. It's so wonderful having you. Also, special thanks to Jeffrey Palmer. He does the Living Card animations at the beginning and end this episode. That beautiful soul ring. That's his work at Living Cards MTG. Yes, check him out. All right, that's it. That's an episode. Thank you so much for making this yeah. amazing upgrade Absolutely. video. You are going to help people that want to channel their inner evil skeleton yes. army. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a great job. All right, well, that's it for us. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>